Let me just say that when you leave tonight after the meeting, I don't know which way you came in, but turn left right here, go down the hall. That's right. That's right. right. Sorry. Your, other <laughs> Your other left. This way. Hey, turn right, go down the hall, and there'll be another little place to turn right and go out the door that way. Don't go out a different exit. Right? I don't think Jonathan needs an introduction. Uh, uh, but, uh, but, uh, he's our president. Let's just leave it there. All right. So you want to present at the Watts. Here are some tips for presenters fresh in season. Can you control it? Uh, no, I can't. I'm just, I have a copy of it here. So, first, don't. Go ahead. Don't present about the Civil War. Generally, if you're proposing a talk, we want it to be about astronomy things, so not some other realm of, of your interest. However, next, if there is an astronomy story to be told in the Civil War, we would like to hear about it. Ralph's buttons were a wonderful example of something that you wouldn't think would be astronomical, but it was definitely relevant to many of our interests. Don't bite off more than you can chew through in an hour or less. There are an infinite number of things to talk about in the field of astronomy or in any subfield of it. So whether you're talking about history or astrophysics or observing, you could talk for hours, but you have to keep editing. Next. So, edit, edit, edit. When you think you can stop cutting, cut a little bit more and see if you can get your 60 sides down to 45. And, uh, just make sure that you spend enough time on each slide and you actually discuss what is on the screen. So go ahead. So don't get too far off topic with color or background information. So maybe the fifth cousin once removed of the astronomy you're talking about is not the best person to spend time on during your presentation. Maybe you should only have four clips from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, rather than <laughs> six. Uh oh, is that real Uh But, go ahead. We saw tonight that humor, human interest, and your personal perspective are the whole point of having, con of having these presentations. You can go on YouTube and watch professional astronomers give talks for as many hours as you would like to spend watching them. So your personal story and your, your personality should be absolutely come through in your presentation. Go ahead. So don't include slides with long paragraphs of text that you intend to read out loud in full while the audience reads along with you, although some people read faster than you're speaking, so they're already done by the time you've finished reading a giant block of text. But do provide key points, summaries, short words, Diagrams, pictures that illustrate the concept you're talking about, because people should be listening to you and hopefully understanding what you're talking about, but you're providing them information on screen to go with what you're saying. Short quotations are great. Long quotations are... Oh, no, 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 go, go back one. Just hit the back button, the left key. Work reviews. Uh, and I couldn't remember what I was talking about. Uh, memory aids, More something memory. that when your viewers are thinking about what you said a week from now or a month from now, it's going to help them remember it. So then I'll make some such. All right, next. Don't over-rehearse. When you've gone through something five or six times, it can sound canned or forced. That is definitely not a problem that I usually have because I usually under-rehearse. Go ahead. But do at least practice talking through it. Make sure you can cover what you intended to cover in the amount of time that you had. So if you can put something together and then come up here and it's like you're seeing it for the first time. So don't try to avoid that by actually talking through your presentation at least once. Go ahead. Do not try to fill every minute of the hour. If you have a slide for every minute that is allotted to you, or if you have two slides for every minute that is allotted to you, the odds that you're going to get through all your slides is very small. The odds are very bad. Um, but do 
leave time for questions because the questions and the actual interaction between your presenter, between you as the presenter and the audience is what makes this an actual club. It's what makes it a group of people thinking together rather than just somebody talking. Go ahead. Don't expect your audience to know more than a fifth grader. Um, <laughs> I love that. So you are not going to teach undergraduate physics to a room of WASP members, much less graduate physics, much less postgraduate physics. Um, this goes back to the Dr. Parton no equation rule. But a few equations are fine. But, but just keep in mind that you may know more considering that you're presenting about something that you're interested in than your audience does and try to be sensitive to what they don't know. Go ahead. But do not treat your audience like they don't know anything about anything because most of us are reasonably seasoned and we have some idea what you're talking about even if we have no idea what the equations are or how to work with them. Go ahead. And even when the kids are here, treating them as adults is good for their personal development. Don't avoid presenting because you feel that you have nothing to offer, because you think that other people are smarter than you or know more than you or have more interesting stories. We, go ahead, we definitely would love to hear from everybody. Tonight was a great example of people that don't normally present, just absolutely doing a wonderful job. And uh, I think they're all rich here for having heard 15 minute talk. So hopefully you guys will give our talks in the future. So that is it for me. I think. Yes. Any questions for any of us? In one the... fast one. Go ahead. Actually, don't over rehearse, but do rehearse. Then uh, rehearse. I, I well, he said to rehearse. The more no. common problem is under rehearsing. Right. No. Under. Don't under rehearse. Time it. I think the key mm -hmm. is time. timing. And timing it so if you do PowerPoint or Keynote on the if you do the presenter screen, you can see how long you've taken. So talking through it once and observing how much time you take gives you a good idea of how much time it's going to take you up there. Now, you're always going to be slower in real life than you are when you're sitting at home alone and practicing. So be aware of that. Um, wear a wristwatch or have a clock in it. Yes. And honestly, or have a first vice president tell you that you're out of time. So. And honestly, you probably want to shoot for about a 40 to 45 minute talk if you've got an hour. Yep, definitely. Uh, and if you present to the Ford Club, they really don't like it if you go long. They yeah. got to tell you. Yeah, they told me I had extra time. They're like, oh, fill the hour. And then, like, as I was saying it, I was like, yeah, and they told me I had some hours. He's like, oh, that changed, sorry. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, 40 minutes or you get the hook with those guys. Yeah. All right. Well, are there any final questions? Thank you. Oh, Bob Berta. One question. Um, anybody who has any questions about their uh, skill level of using you know, computers or whatever, there's plenty of people that we can assist them. So they need somebody to help them. Taking pictures, put them on the computer, there's plenty of people there. We can do that. That's all a great the time. point, Bob. Absolutely. And Ken Burton is probably the most eager volunteer for that sort of thing. Help you out all the way through. Yeah. So. Alrighty, thank you for coming up tonight. I hope you had a good time and we'll see you at Cranford for the next all restaurant right. after the meeting. That was and a wonderful yes. meeting. Well everyone it knows was. about it. Good job there. Great meeting. Great meeting.